clear and open air by shining on the sun. You will have no mistakes to sing God's praise. The those who have God ahead of it because some who knew went ahead of you, including my life. So we now remember. We have to greet each other and say hi. I am home of the So we do not sound as abnormal or abnormal because we have joined a force of tremendous God forgiving people who have made their place in life. Let us celebrate His glory. We have the reading of the scripture to the Lord. First lesson, Old Testament lesson, by Pastor Williams. Then we have the New Testament lesson from James, by K. Carvalho. Then we have the story by George Hoss. <laughs> the George Hoss. Then we have a series of tributes. These tributes will be done by Joseph Williams, Father. Fiona, Martinson, Martinson, Peace, Ferdinand, Nathan, Nigel Williams, Bob, Marcia, Marcia, and then we have a music of the children. I'll come back at the end. In that part, you lose the long road. Your minds will change as you go. And we now have a reading of the two lessons. The first by Pastor the second by Casey Carver. Good morning, everyone. Please stand for the reading of God's holy word. Again, the scripture reading is taken from Ecclesiastic 3. I'll be reading from verse 1 to 8. And it reads, To everything there is a season, and a time for every purpose under the heaven. A time to be born, and a time to die. A time to plant, and a time to pluck up that which is planted. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to get and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to cast away. A time to rain and a time to sow. A time to keep silence and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time of war and a time of peace. Here ends a portion of God's holy word. We honor it by saying,
therefore to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. This is the word of the Lord. Your 
grandmother said if I cried, I couldn't come up. So I had to get myself together. Sorry, Grandma. If um, I am killed and his niece, people on behalf of my mother went to them. Oh, if you personally know my mother, she is not a big public speaker. So that's why she had me. And here's her letter to her brother. To my dearest brother, I am still in disbelief. I find myself unable to talk about this alone without my heart breaking. I will truly miss you and your morning message. Once 8 a.m. hits, I know your message will come with a word of encouragement or something to brighten our day. When the kids and I move to Philly, we really don't be like you. Once work was over and the kids were out of class, we headed our way. We headed your way to be in your presence. We joked and laughed, and by the time we looked outside, it was dark. The only break I took from seeing you was the weekend. Moving to Jamaica didn't change that bond. It just meant more phone calls. I loved all my brothers, but our relationship was truly special. You are my best friend. As much as I love you, I know my kids do as well. We love them. They can never say they were treated any different from your own children. Thank you, Neville. Thank you for being our protector. Thank you for being our provider. Thank you for being a great giver. My heart will truly miss you, brother. My best friend. I love you. Thank you. Um, I don't think I have much to say about my uncle, but I truly appreciate you. I have a lot of uncles, but I tend to be closest to the eldest of the youngest. And when we moved to Philly, he truly was a great father figure. If you ask me, the image of a man who would have characteristics of my uncle. And he's the only one that I call uncle. Everyone else has to have their name behind it, but he knows his name when I'm just calling him. And he always told me he felt special when he heard it as well. I was truly, truly busy. I didn't tell you enough. I appreciate you so much, and I thank you. Thank you, my brother. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
And typically, you know, it's so easy for me to write. It's so easy for me to work with this speak. This is, I couldn't come up with something to write or put on a paper. I didn't have the words. All I had was God. I'm so used to being able to find solutions. I'm a performer. I'm always the one, just like my dad, trying to make sure that I identify what the solution to the problem is going to be. And I'm providing. But with this, there is no solution. There is no solution but the Lord. And as I stand here before all you, before you all today, if you don't have a relationship with God, I want to encourage you strongly to get one. It's important. The only way I was able to get through is because of it. This loss has taken us all by surprise. But I love to hear the wonderful that each and every one of you have to say about my dad. And clearly, y'all are all here, so y'all are thoroughly supporting me and love me. And though I wasn't here as much as I would have liked to be, we're here now. And I've never planned to leave. The work that I plan to do in his name will live on forever. Y'all may not know I'm a social worker, I'm a therapist in Washington, D.C. I'm a supervisor in Washington, D.C. I'm a lot in Washington, D.C., but I'm going to be a lot here. I want to bring back what I know I already have in me in his name. And as you all said before me today, I just want to say thank you. Thank you. Because some of us came from young, you know, to get here. Some of us didn't get here. And I'm still here for them as well. We're here for them as well. And I just want to, you know, just take the time to encourage everybody to breathe. I know that this process, everybody breathes differently. Everybody has their own way. But I want to encourage everybody to take their time with this. There's no easy way. There's no easy way. And I really just wanted to also say that I love each and every one of you. Y'all may not know me, but we family. And what I really want to do is just make sure my dad's name lives on forever. I, I, I truly just want to make sure his name lives on forever. And I'm going to end with the scripture. Chapter 11, verse 28 and 30. Come to me, all, you, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is life. Amen.
See now, I'm funny, but I'll give some credit to him, where it's due, because he was a funny dude too. Not as funny as me, but he had his moments. Seriously though, he knew how to read a room and adapt to any environment. He made a lasting impact on every inch of soil he stepped on. The best man I've ever known. So kind and so thoughtful to everyone. He never came empty handed. Whether it was to take out, whether it was take out food, gifts for charity, gifts for my cousins, me, or even movies to watch at home. That man literally just wanted to make sure everyone else was good. The true servant leader. An example of putting people before himself. I'm gonna share just a few stories with you all that constantly replay in my head. I must have been to Jamaica a hundred times, and he had the same agenda every single time. Forced me to eat seven meals a day, go to the beach 10 times a week, and have them prepare fish in every way you can think of. Drive all over town, play cards for what seemed like 30 minutes, but was all day. And I know this was our forever secret, but we really missed an episode of Love and Hip Hop or any, other, any of our other favorite shows. He swore up and down and around town and he only watched those shows because his daughter liked to watch it. And he called it bonding. <laughs> but I know deep down as humble as he is, they love excitement. But for real, anyone who isn't familiar with the show, it's a reality TV show based in several major cities throughout the US that focuses on relationships of famous people in the music industry. And I never met another man that watched this show in my life, like ever. But my dad did. And you know what he told me every time that I found him for it? He told me that he'd do anything to see a smile on my face. On occasions where I, I had basketball practice and it would run over, he would still watch the show without me and then update me on everything that happened. That's a father, because that's my show. But willing to put the stereotypical descriptions of a man aside and focusing on what made me happy. He did so much more, but it's really the little things that matter to me most. And to my sports fans, if you're wondering, he could have beat me in basketball. As I always said, Melika Bapitalawala. My dad was just my first heart, my best friend, my first heartbeat. But I was looking to Boston every time. I remember when I was young, I'd go out and put, a fit to, put on a fit to go to McDonald's, not for the food, but for the toy. Whether it was my mom, my older cousins, or close family friends tired of me being a spoiled brat for a cheap kids meal toy, sorry but not sorry, at the same time, it was because my dad never told me no. We just can't blame, we can, we can just blame him because I'm innocent. He was the sweetest, most gentle, and creative person. I had what felt like the biggest extravaganza of birthday parties in the park every year. I love the face paintings, the bouncy houses, the princess characters and all, but even today, you know what I love most? It was the handmade birthday cards from my dad that were more like mini flags with some of the favorite, my favorite cartoons on them. I think I like the strawberry shortcake one the most. He supported me in anything I believed I could do. He encouraged me always to finish school and be the best that I could be. I mean, he even let me drive around in Jamaica when I was underage. But, mom, you did not hear that. You all did not hear that either. It was supposed to be our secret, but I can't get in trouble for it. Um, he knew that his daughter was a big time NASCAR driver, so it's okay. He had my, dad, my back regardless. Even when I was wrong, he told everyone else that I was right, and then he would correct me in private so that I could learn from my mistakes. That's really my God for real. Like, I really could talk to him about anything, and I mean anything. He never liked any of my boyfriends growing up, but I mean what father does. He still, he still made sure that he would listen when I wanted to talk and vent. And some way, somehow, he would still convince me by the end of the conversation, just be by yourself. But as he should. Um, I remember I used to model for Barbizon and absolutely hated it. Not because it wasn't fun, but because I don't like hearing people talk and tell them what to do. I didn't like agents telling me to do this competition and that competition. But don't get me wrong, out of ballet, piano, tech, dance, and everything else, modeling was my favorite activities growing up. But I definitely put on a fight before going. 
no matter how old I got, my mom would have to call him every single time because he was the only one who could calm me down and motivate me to do it. The only one. My mom and dad raised me to be an alpha woman, so like it's really, 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 really challenging for me to not challenge other people. It's from a place of love, though. I practice my debating skills on the people that are closest to me because y'all looking at a future lawyer right here one day. That was his wish for me. God willing, that continues to be my plan. So dad, for you, I will continue to be that alpha woman that always made you proud. I'm finishing my master's degree in May for you and then chasing that law degree soon after for you. I will continue to stand up not only for myself but for others who don't have a voice because that's what you did. It's what I will continue to do because that's what I remember you and my mom always doing. So for those that don't like it, well, so be it. It's not my fault. I just saw it grow up. Mom, I love you forever and unconditionally. Call me dramatic, but I'm still gonna tell my dad every single time you get on my nerves. Because that's what I've, I've always done. And that's, that's just what's usual to me. I would give anything to just have one more hug, one more conversation, one more laugh, but I know that you're in a better place now, and I'm glad that you're no longer suffering. Rest peacefully, you did well, and I will continue to make you proud. I love you forever.
we are in a place in this world for a limited time. And with the breath of the infant begins a race to the grave. A race everyone must run. Whereas it has been the will of God Almighty. It has been the will of God Almighty to remove from our midst a most valued friend and member of the body of Christ, we the pastor and first lady, officers, ministers, and members of the Church of God of Freeport, New York, bow our heads in the humble submission to His divine will. He is resolved that we hereby give a formal expression of grievous loss in the death of Brother Neville Livingstone Williams and do hereby extend our heartfelt prayers and love. Brother Neville Livingstone Williams was and always will be dear and precious to the body of Christ family. To the family of Brother Neville Livingstone Williams, be strong and of good courage, and the Lord will strengthen your heart. Be it further resolved that this resolution be rendered to the family of Brother Neville Livingston Williams as a humble expression of the Church of God of Freeport, by my heartfelt sympathy in your bereavement. And this is signed by the Reverend Dr. Frank Benassi. Thank you. We needed to read that. I, I am not a member of that church, but I do attend because Bev is always inviting us to events there. Now we we'll go a little bit of the obituary. And the children talk about Neville as a father. And past his father spoke about him as a son. So let me talk about him as an aunt. My brothers and sisters, greetings. Blessed be the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. The book of Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes chapter 7 gives us some advice to follow in the time of adversity. It is better to go to the house of mourning than the house of feasting, for that is the end of every man, and the living, us here, should take it to heart. Sorrow is better than laughter, because when the face is sad, the heart grows wiser. The heart of the wise is in the house of mourning. So you are all here, wise. So to summarize, the scriptures tells us you are wise to be here. The family of Neville Williams, thank you for your presence. Now let me tell you about my firstborn nephew. Neville Livingston Williams was born on March 26, 1966 at the Victoria Jubilee Lion Hospital, a real Kingstonian. I saw him at a few days old when I visited Bev, his mom. She was a new mother, worried that the rain wouldn't stop so Neville's nappies could dry. Neville was fast asleep. He attended Melrose Primary School until he left with his family for the USA in 1981. He attended the Union Dale High School in Long Island, New York. With his brothers, Neville and the other boys had a paper route. They would assemble up to six different parts of the paper for the Sunday delivery. The joke was his mother, Sarah, and his father, and I, we were the ones doing the work while they slept. But we will tell that story another day. Even ever industrious while in high school, Neville got a car and worked part-time at McDonald's. When he left high school, he worked in the healthcare sector and with his dad, Joseph. Neville desired to be an entrepreneur. He 
He wanted to be his own boss. He knew that owning his own business in Jamaica allowed his dad to provide materially for all his family and never wanted to do that. He wanted to do what his father did. So never relocated to the nearby state of Pennsylvania. He operated a Jamaican theme store and convenience store. He also became a promoter of music acts coming from Jamaica and a party planner. He bought his own home and persuaded his only sister Winston and her family to relocate to Pennsylvania. Those were the children who spoke before. But, however, the result of one's hard work can cause resentment in others and parts to undermine success. That is when the prayer Jesus taught us, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Never, never kept a grudge. When he returned to Jamaica and never continued his entrepreneurial life, he started renting out cars and, and equipment for landscaping, etc. Our dear Selena introduced Neville to the folks and friends at Navigator, where he created a whole new family for himself. Neville was affectionately known as Geeks to them. I thank the people of Navigator who showed Neville such love. Neville was a proud father of his children. He loved them and appreciated how they studied and succeeded academically and have begun to strive in their professional career. He was very proud of all his children. Never was kind, not loud, owns no grudge, a good listener with a ready smile. He was devoted to family and worked to, remain, to maintain relationships. His father, Joseph, always remarked he always told me that he could reason with Neville. And his grandma, was, my mother was passed away, she always called him the lover. From his mid-thirties, Neville started to have health issues. He managed his problems of diabetes, hypertension, and in latter year, he had an open heart surgery. The weakening of his body took its toll. He was in great pain, but never complained. Winston and his sister spoke to him for hours, and neither one of them wanted to hang up. His mother Beverly prayed that never would overcome the latest challenge, and she, now retired, was preparing to make nursing back to better health, but it was not to be. From an early age, never was baptized and attended church with his family in Jamaica and in New York. At home, Beth and the children would always be singing hymns. But, like many young adults who become open to other influences in society, they are eager to be alive and looking for the meaning of life. His uh, faith grew a little dim, and attendance put at church was a little sporadic. However, Neville reaffirmed his Christian faith in this church and renewed his baptismal promises at this court more holiness church, which he attended. There, my sister, she told me she was very joyful that he was back in church. As the elder states in the third letter of St. John, nothing gives me greater joy than to hear that my children are walking in the truth. Never understood the role of a Christian. Never believed that when a person is given the grace of God, the life of Christ in us, the person must give it away. In other words, Christian must be on mission. 
Being on mission is not always traveling to faraway places. Never always sent out a biblical text or inspirational text each day to people near and far. The last text he sent on Friday, February 3rd, reads as follows. The road I've traveled hasn't been easy, but I'm still here. The only reason I'm here today is because God was walking the road with me every step of the way. Amen. During Friday night, a shift took place. As the hymn says, do not be afraid. I go before you always. Come, follow me, and I will give you rest. We got no text on Saturday, because Jesus, our blessed Savior, had walked never home. His mom, Bev, was on the phone with Omar, who had come to visit Neville. Let us lift Omar up in prayer, his brother. Never leaves to mourn his children, Nigel, Nicholas, Marche, Dolani, and Naya. Parents Joseph Williams Sr. and Mrs. Beverly Graham Williams. Brothers Christopher, also known as Bobby, Antonio, Omar, Joseph Jr. Another brother named predeceased kid. Sisters Winsome and our dear Selena. Aunts, uncles, nieces, nephews, cousins, and friends. Too numerous to mention. May I close with a prayer? We ask eternal rest, grant unto never, O Lord. May never's soul and the soul of all our faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. The rest of the reward of the life of Love Williams is written on the history of the love of the life. You have to be in heaven to hear it. So I trust that if he speaks to you from the grave, you will hear an invitation to surrender and submit to your life. Jesus Christ. The bringing of the word for us today is the minister of the church, Mr. Ellie Francis. She is one of the ministers committed to the class of ministry. And indeed, one of the day was to her here also today. It's my privilege and pleasure to have her minister at this pure service, at this answer.
were needed and the permanence of it. Their hearts were breaking. And so Jesus sets out to comfort them in this first six verses of St. John 14. Much of all the comfort is the same to us today as we mourn the loss of our dear brother, never living. Comforts us in these ways. In the time of uncertainties, he comforts us in these ways and literally prepares us for a life in eternity with him. The first way that Jesus prepares us is that he says, Do not be troubled. That is the first comfort that Jesus gives. Jesus did not say that there would not be trouble. In fact, the scriptures say that many are the afflictions of the righteous. But it promises that the Lord delivers out of them all. In Luke chapter 21, it speaks to the trouble that will come upon the earth to all people. Times of pestilence, times of evil, and persecution for Christians. Yet Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. He's saying that though we live in a troubled, hostile world where evil and wickedness abound, and there seems to be an absence of God, an absence of the fear of God that gives legitimate reason for us to be troubled, Jesus is still saying, let not your heart trouble. But God, you don't understand. Where are you? Where are you when we need a healing? Where are you, Lord, in all of this? Where are you, Lord, when you put up down? Because Martha, the sisters, literally said that to Jesus, if you were here, you don't understand my pain. Yes, he does. In Isaiah 53, it says, it tells us that he is a man of sorrow and acquainted with grief. He's in touch and moved by our pain. He is not a God of far off because the Bible calls him Emmanuel, God with us. When he came and died on the cross, he experienced the pain of our eternal soul. So he confidently says to us, let not your heart be troubled. Though he speaks to us as his people, it is a personal call, it is a personal encouragement to us individually, let not your heart be troubled. In the nation of Jamaica, there are many reasons for a troubled heart when the value of human lives seem to be worth less than some of those copper coins you see two on the wall. And people pay a high price to just, to just move people from the poor and to get rid of people's lives. And yet still the Lord is saying, with all of that, with all of what is happening, with all of the war and what is taking place, the Lord is saying, let not your heart be troubled. Here we have no solution, because one of his daughters talking about no solution. The Lord is saying, let not your heart be troubled, because he actually has the solution. He's the God with the solution. He's our Lord, and he has the solution. Let us give him some praise in the house of the Lord. Many of us would say, I mean, what is it you're talking about, Lord? I mean, hearts are not only troubled, but broken. Many seem to be sliding into depression at this time. Many are faced with more than one family member passing at a rapid pace. But he still says, let not your heart be troubled. And this is the reason why in his second admonition, because he said, let not your heart be troubled. 
care is how to do that. He said, believe in me. It takes faith in our Lord Jesus Christ to let not your heart be troubled. You see, it is a, it is a precursor. When we look at it, Jesus already prepared that comfort and that cushion for us to let not our hearts be troubled. So he was sent to do the work at the cross to call us back to the Father. He literally prepared the thing, to prepare the rest, to prepare that peace for us that would let our hearts not be troubled. The trouble of this world is just birthday pains for the eternity if you believe in the Son of God. The focus is not on what is happening here because the world and its evils are passing away. The focus is on our faith in Jesus Christ and in what he has said. He is the living word and he cannot lie. When the words of men and the promises of men fail us, and they don't even fail us because people are lying to us, it, they fail even in your best intention to do good towards us. Because if you look at it, the abilities of men are limited. The abilities of men are limited. Jesus is the only one, the Lord, our Savior, is the only one with the unlimited power. So when we get a promise from someone that I will be there, that I will always go to it don't necessarily work out. And it's not because the person is a liar, it is because the abilities of men are limited. So that is the reason why Jesus said, believe in me, because he has that unlimited power. He has what it takes to back up what he has said. He is the I am, that I am. He is a great and awesome God, and he is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all he can ask or imagine. So why the natural world is full of death? And we believe the word of God, that his word is spirit and is life. So when we look around us and things seem to be dying and things seem to be not going the way that we want to go, we can have that rest in the word of the Lord that is spirit and life. To believe in Jesus as one of his is life. To believe in the things of this natural world is death. I am so pleased. I sat here and I, and I must say it again that I am so pleased to be to, to, to know that our brother that he gave his life to the Lord. There's a wisdom in it when someone that you can see that the, the God of this earth. The Satan did not blind his eyes to the fact that his life here on earth is limited and that the life with the Lord is eternal and abundant. That the pain that he is feeling now, the sickness that he is in now, when he steps out of that body, because the Bible says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord, he knows there is no more pain, no more sorrow, no more of and he is in joy unspeakable and full of glory. Can I get a hallelujah from the house of the Lord? Hallelujah. So Jesus promises, here is what he has to say. He said, in my father's house are many mansions. Jesus is saying, believe in me that I am the Son of God. The God of the Holy Spirit and that God, my Father, a kingdom full of mansions prepared for those who have given their lives to Him. The very foundation of the Christian world is faith. So when He says, believe in me, He's reinforcing that to give His disciples. I am with you, I have been with you, I have taught you, believe in me. 
There are five times, five different times. This scripture, the just shall live by faith, is not in the Bible. If you are God's, if you believe in God, it takes faith, it takes this belief, it takes this focus that no matter what is happening, you are concentrating on the Lord. You are not leaving that vision. You are not stepping to the right or to the left. Because if Jesus said it, he will do it. That is the confidence that the Lord is asking us to have in him and in his word. And it takes faith to live in today's world. When we look around and we see all that is happening, when we see that the loved one is going, someone who provided the support, the anxiety and all that that would be to just as much as all the disciples were perplexed about Jesus going away, because there is a natural thing to be anxious, to be, to be fearful, to be all of that, because I mean, this is a father, this is a son, this is, this is a person that we have always known, and he's always there, and he's not going to be there anymore. But Jesus said, we must believe in him. The next thing that Jesus said, the third point that Jesus said in this scripture is, I will come back for you. I will come back for you. Jesus made them know that he will come back for them. This promise is still for us today. And even when our brother has passed, if he was alone and all of that, I can tell you he was not alone because the Lord is faithful to show up for his servant. Even at that point when no one else is alone, the Lord is faithful to keep his promise. For some, it is a joyful anticipation of our Lord coming back for us. And it is not so much so for others. You see, the world's system cannot lead us to Jesus. It is not the way to an eternity with him. The way to God is Jesus Christ. There is no other way. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. So as I wrap up this sermon, because I'm not speaking very long with you, this brings me to my appeal to you. Your dad, son, uncle, Right? I am saying, I am appealing to you that you see your dearly beloved departed family member. So, it is not even seen as a natural thing for mother and father to bury their children. It is supposed to be the other way around. But God gives the comfort in all of this. So, my appeal to you is, what would you say? No. He has left behind a testimony of giving his life to the Lord. He understood that he was appointed unto man once to die and then the judgment. As he stands before the Lord, it will be Welcome into my kingdom. How much of us can say that as we remember his life and we talk about him in this loving way? And if we want to see him again and to be with the Lord and at the promises that he has given, will any of us today surrender our lives? and give the promises of Jesus Christ, the promises
see that the name of David give you the opportunity to work in your life and to give you that peace even in the midst of sickness, even in the midst of death, in the midst of a troubled world, there is this peace that passes all understanding. So today I will ask, as I pray, let us go ahead, eyes closed. Is there anyone who would want me to just pray a prayer for them? As you consider your life, as you consider the promises of God, and as you consider your daily path with the Lord, I see that time. Is there anyone else that would have you to pray for you at this time? I see your answer. 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 Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, Father, we give you glory and we give you honor this morning. Lord, we magnify your name in the midst, O oh God Almighty, of our morning. Lord, we see the hands of those that have been raised, mighty God. Lord God, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray that every obstacle, Lord God Almighty, everything that will keep them, O oh God, from surrendering their lives to be used by you, Lord God Almighty, will be moved in this day. Lord God, we pray, O oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ, for a total and a complete surrender to you, for a life of service and a life of worship, mighty God, to you. Lord God, let the testimony, O oh God, that never living soul, millions have left behind, is that these, O oh God Almighty, have given their lives, O oh God, even at this Thanksgiving service. Father God Almighty, because it will be appointed unto him, O oh God, these souls, mighty God, those who have heard the word of hope of the word, O oh God Almighty, of your promise, and have taken the step and say, Here I am, Lord, use me, I am yours. God, we give you praise. We ask that you bless them, Lord God. We ask that you move upon your lives, O oh God Almighty, to that total and that complete commitment, O oh God, to you, that on that day they will hear, well done, good and faithful servant. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. For I know my Redeemer and in the end he shall stand on the earth. Yes, I know my Redeemer and in the end he shall stand on
Hi everyone. Hi. We want you to join us back live at the Graveside in 45 mm -hmm. minutes. So see you in 45 minutes at the Graveside. Thank you.
shall remain and his remain there until that great day when all the dead in Christ shall rise to meet you in the sky. Consecrate this place now we pray in the Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. The second hymn is when the trumpet of the Lord shall sound. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and time shall be no more and the morning breaks eternal bright and fair when the of earth shall gather to their beyond the skies and the road is called of yonder I'll be there oh when the when the road is called of yonder when the when the road is called of yonder when the when the road is called of yonder when the road is called of yonder I'll be there on that bright and countless morning when the day and the glory of his resurrection share. When his chosen one shall gather to their home beyond the sky. And the road is called of yonder, I'll be there, be there. When the road, the road is called of yonder. When the road is called of yonder. When the road is called of yonder. When the road is called of yonder, I'll be there. Let us labor, let us labor from the dawn to setting sun. Let us talk of all his wondrous love and care. The flight is over and the work on earth is done. And the road is called of yonder, I'll be there. Oh, when the road is called of yonder, when the road is called of yonder, Oh! 
if I lose myself and find it. Lord, in me. Lord, I could not stand alone. When I come before thy throne, let me bring, dear Lord, at least one soul to thee. Take me, use me, Lord, I pray. Till I lose myself and find it, Lord, in So may I lose. I want to also thank my grandmother because even though she is getting up there in age, she still moves like she is quick on the feet. <laughs> and she put all this together. She put all of this together. So I can't thank you enough, Grandma, and I can't thank my family enough for being here and us just coming together to celebrate. And then, and today, what we're going to do is release some balloons on the behalf of Neville Livingston Williams, her son, his uncle, my our daddy. daddy. <laughs> yes. And we are so grateful again that you all are here. Because if y'all wasn't, we probably, we probably, we need y'all here. Because we all a family. Let me just stop there. Because I can, I'm already enough as enough. <laughs> Enough is enough. So let's release these balloons in my daddy's name. One, two, three. Are we going to count down? Three, two, two 